Well, according to this, it looks like my flash drive is somewhere in this park. Alright, let's give it a shot. Yep, nothing quite like walking into the woods facing an unknown enemy with any certain amount of danger. You know, this kind of reminds me of a story. A story that was once told for a few months after it happened, then it was completely forgotten after the next year, with another adventure along the way. And with that, I do mean Suburban Nights. For those who are unfamiliar with this little nugget, it is their third installment in the That Guy With The Glasses anniversary in which this one entails the nostalgic critic bringing all of his fellow internet critics together again to set out on a quest throughout the suburban Chicago area and seek out a very powerful magic gauntlet. Along the way, they encounter various obstacles, threats from new enemies, challenges that will forever shape yada 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 well you get the idea. Now with that said, listen, let's start this uh, adventure off as I try to look for the uh, flash drive because quite honestly, I need some time to kill. Our story begins with this Green Day looking groupie who picks up this strange hitchhiker who is dressed like a model from a leatherworks store. The stranger gets upset as he sees a whole bunch of technology inside his car and decides to blow his head off and his car as well. A little excessive don't you think? We then cut to some happy-go-lucky Joe who is excited that he won a free car or so he thinks after walking into the house. Wow, you would think that all of them would have seen this coming from a mile away while they were traveling all the way up to Chicago. Well, it would appear that the gang is all here. Well, most of them at least. But while others may have left Channel Awesome in 2011, there are in fact some new faces within the group. People like Obscurus Lupa and Todd in the Shadows. So the nostalgia critic makes his presence known as he tells everyone that what they are tasked with is something- I'll do that for you, critic. Wait, who the hell is that? Ah, oh, film friend, I see you've met Luke Mockery. He's an up-and-coming talent on the site, a real go-getter. I'm sort of like you, only fresh and new. <laughs> huh. Alright, hang on a second. <clears throat> Luke Mockery. Alright, son of Colin Mockery. That's nice. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh shit, um, well I could think of a couple of jokes for this line, but perhaps it's not best, so let's move on. So as Filmbrain is upset that Critic found a new intern, he plays an old VHS tape of an old news story about a nerd named Chuck Jaffers who mysteriously disappeared while searching for a magical gauntlet called Malachite's Hand. After some quick research, the Nostalgia Critic discovers the map to the treasure and realizes that if they find the magical gauntlet, they could make a whole lot of money. But the entire group is unsure, once again, whether or not to follow the critic on this epic journey, after the shenanigans from last year, of course. However, critic gives another heartwarming speech, this time with more compassion and no Nazi references this time around. So, what say you, my proud warriors of virtue? God damn it, it's like working with a bunch of kindergartners! Wait, fired? To my recollection, you're the one who only pays them in recognition on your website, Critic. So they all come back and under the map stipulation that they all cosplay as fantasy themed characters and we spend a good 10 minutes going over everyone's costumes until... Apologies, I was busy doing my dance magic dance. Oh my god, it's David Bowie from Labyrinth. Does that mean he's got the... Ah! Oh my. Sweet package, man. And so the Nostalgic Critic splits the group up in hopes of having a better chance of finding the magical gauntlet. Mati also shows up, which nobody wants him to join, so they give him a distraction and the epic journey of their annual franchise is underway. And like all epic journeys that begin, darkness is also looming around the corner of their local park as three mysterious cloaked figures are on the hunt. 
So over on Team Critic, the group wanders down the beaten path as they try to find a strange animal with a tail. It turns out that this cat named Cat, ha, yeah, very original, tells the group that he is aware that they are in search of Malachite's hand, and neither one of them has the heart to unlock its true power. Critic, not believing anything that Cat is saying, decides to have its balls cut off until it fights back in the form of a homeless puppeteer. The fight doesn't go too well until the nostalgic chick distracts the guy with her impressions of Liv Tyler and knocks him out. Meanwhile, on the other side of the park, Team 2, yeah, I know, I don't really know a proper name to call this group. Tensions begin to mount as Pa Dugan becomes a little too obsessed with his character role. Feed me all rage, Forrest. And Film Brain threatens Luke for constantly cock blocking his relationship with the critic, which results in an over the top dick eating joke. I will eat your penis! Oh my. And here I thought I was gonna use that clip only once today. Anywho, they come across the three cloaked figures who turn out to be guardians of Malachite's hand, called the Cloaks. Huh, and here I thought I was bad at naming teams. So the Cloaks are aware that the internet critics are in search of Malachite's gauntlet, and they will do what they must to prevent that from happening. Spooty takes the lead as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the cheap cosplayers, unleashing some epic magic. Lightning ball! Lightning ball! However, it turns out that the Cloaks truly do have some dark magic within them, as the leader unleashes his power at Team 2 as the stranger looks on. Meanwhile, Team Critic takes a break from their adventure and after trying to force out an over-the-top crotch shot joke, Mati returns with Nostalgic Chick's contact lens and is ready to join in on their adventure. However, for whatever reason, Critic gives Mati another fraudulent task by trying to find goat porn to help with Mickey's erectile dysfunction. You know, I really don't understand why they can't just bring Mati along. I mean, the character was never really insufferable to begin with, so why bother pushing him off? Back on the other side of the park, the Cloaks are in hot pursuit of Team 2 as they come across a playground which is worthy of a proper battleground. And my god, it is surely one for the ages. With weapons lightly tapping each other, using playground shenanigans that are around them to their advantage, and throwing in a couple of movie references just to cheese things out. Prepare to meet Kali in hell. Okay, I will admit, that scene was pretty hilarious. So after five to ten more minutes of fighting, they switch to another park because some kid wanted to use the playground, and Team 2 gives the cloaks the slip, and for no apparent reason, lose the map in the process. Back over to Team Critic, they come across their next obstacle, which is a good witch that they must fight in order to pass her. She brings the thunder as Critic and the gang run around in circles and Phalus, watching his toys get destroyed during the scuffle. So enough is enough and Handsome Tom walks up to the not-so-good witch with his ultimate weapon of choice. Oh, you well, if Mace can be very effective against Bay Area college hipsters, why not cosplaying witches as well? Back over to Team 2, Spoony realizes now that he just lost the map for the group, and they couldn't help but notice the mysterious stranger watching them from afar. The stranger hands the map back to Team 2, and before they could ask him any questions, the cloaks catch up with the group as they now break the fourth wall and exchange gunfire. Wait, I didn't know we could use machine guns! My name is Inigo Montoya, motherfucker! Team 2 manages to get away, but Phil Brave falls behind as the Cloaks capture him and makes him one of their own. Back over on Team Critic, their journey leads them to someone's house and Mati returns again, completing another side task for the Nostalgia Critic. But before Critic could assign him to another benign task, Mati gets upset that he realizes that Critic doesn't want him because the power of heart does absolutely nothing. They come across some dude inside who guides them to a journal which summons Chuck Jaffers. Chuck tells the gang that Malachi trapped him inside the book because he figured out where the gauntlet was hidden after all these years. He goes on to tell the team critic that he re-hid the gauntlet after finding out Malachi wanted it for himself and also gave his friends dark magic powers in order to stop anyone who is out looking for the magical item. Before any more exposition can be told, Chuck realizes that these are the adventurers that he was expecting and scares them all away after trying to kill them. 
Back over to the Cloaks, their newest member Filmbrain is becoming more of a nuisance as they decide to ditch him only for Team 2 to find him again and snap him out of this trance that he is in. It looks like he's been hypnotized. Is there any way to hypnotize him back? Here, grab my ball. Oh my my my. Don't worry, that'll be the last time I'll use that clip. So after some more frustration coming out of the Nostalgia Critic, he now realizes that it was Malachite who sent him the map and that the original is with Team 2. But before they could find their other friends, another obstacle stands in their way, but it turns out to be their good old buddy Swade, who challenges the Critic to Mortal Kombat. What? Uh, d touch my sword. Touch it. Oh, I'm defeated. Let's get out of here. Huh, well, that was easy. Later, Team 2 are led to this house, and in the basement they discover the voice of the ancient world. Which if you ask me, he sounds way less ancient and more of an angry, nerdy, kind of glowing basketball. And you sound like an ass, so what's it to you? Looks like a basketball? Sounds like a fucking asshole. Great. Anywho, the ancient voice talks about the origin of Malachite, and long story short, Malachite is a sorcerer who hates any form of technology, so he puts all of his darkest magic into a stone, and his friend Aeon forged a ring to counter Malachite's magic. A few tilted images and a volcano stock footage later, Aeon took Malachite's stone and buried it somewhere on Earth, while Malachite himself wandering the world in search of his stone again. There, I just saved you about four minutes of exposition with only two sentences right there. And after the ancient voice ditches Team 2, that one guy with framed glasses gives the group the exact location of where the stone is. Which is... Oh, you've got to be... Fucking kidding me! It's right back where we started! So, Team Critic are right back where they started, and the Nostalgia Critic pulls Malachite's hand out of the sewer, which was placed there by Chuck decades ago. Chuck switched out the gauntlet and attached the stone to a power glove, and tries to take the stone from them, as he tells the group that they are not worthy to wield its power. Chuck summons his cosplaying friends, along with the ancient voice, to destroy the internet critics once and for all. The Nostalgia Critic rallies his team, and we get another epic battle. Which, if you ask me, is not quite as epic as the first one. Mostly due to the fact that pretty much a lot of these fight scenes and battle scenes are pretty much way too shaky and one too many close-ups, kind of like st taken straight out of any of the uh, Taken movies. But nevertheless, the rest of Team 2 charges in to take down the rest of the cosplaying brigade and Swade discovering the stone in the nick of time. It turns out that this mysterious stranger is Malachite, as he was the one who used the internet critics to find the gauntlet for him, and is able to take down two of the minions and send Chuck straight into orbit. To hell with this! I'm getting out of here! Wasn't that the last angry geek? Ah, don't worry about that guy. He'll be back in around five years or so when he does a recap on this previous adventure. I'm the hero! Me! Not the critics! They're jerks! I saved the day and I got no respect or honor or money for it. Oh. So Malachite obtains the power glove and being rejuvenated with his dark magic, begins his assault on the critics. As he takes them down as well, one at a time. Malachite relishes in his unlimited power as he begins one of his bad guy spiels like every other villain does in the movies. The world of metal and wheels has come to an end and its first victims shall be on this field. Hello? Wait, what? That's a friggin' iPhone! So what? <laughs> hypocrite! <coughs> At least I'm not a hypocrite. Um, uh, that's exactly what you are. And just as Malachite is about to destroy the world, Mati returns and antagonizes the evil sorcerer as the power of heart knocks the villain down a peg. It turns out that one of Aeon's creations was passed down to Mati as his ring actually does have some true power to defeat Malachite. So as these two exchange some mystical blows, the internet critics all chant in unison with all of their, well, heart. 
and Malachi is obliterated once and for all. However, everything comes at a price as Mati lays motionless on the ground and slowly dies due to his injuries. The internet critics give Mati a sentimental and somewhat proper funeral as they send his remains into the great beyond. And as they all go back to their little corners of the world reviewing bad movies and bad video games, the nostalgia critic ponders about what he would have done to bring Mati back to life, and Linkara suggests that he should go find the Necronomicon. And since everyone has pretty much left, the nostalgia critic knows just the person to recruit. Oh my god, I want a car! Thus concluding the second installment of the Channel Awesome Adventure series. Not quite as memorable, but pretty much a nice little installment, to say the least. What this proves is that whenever trouble looms and the fate of the world is in the balance, these critics will be there to stop evil in its place. Well, sometimes. Sure, looking back on this, a lot of them do seem to be out of place, but you can tell that their jokes are a little funny at times, the effects can be really good, and the storyline for this can be a bit choppy here and there, but it isn't insufferable. And they never do touch on the Necronomicon in their next adventure to bring Mati back. But they do, however, travel to the stars in order to bring back their friend in their next adventure. But that will be a story which I will talk about sometime in November of next year. Hey, you have to give me a little time with these things because, to be honest with you, this next one is at least over three and a half goddamn hours. So you can understand, I need a little time on this one. have to open up with that line what it's catchy it's annoying you know what I've had just about enough with you what an authentic Hylian shield where did you get that comic-con Just paralyzed. Temporarily. You are an amazing alternate version, Agnitrex. And you and I are not so different. We may look identical on the outside, but I'm nothing like you on the inside. You're insane. Well, to each his own. Uh, I chose my path. You chose the way of the critics. And they found you amusing for a while. But the one thing the watchers like more than a critic is to see their credit fall, broken, possibly even be exposed for a video to which they regret and stop making videos altogether. Strip down to their bare prime and lose all their viewers. So I ask you, why bother? Because it's right. Here's the real truth. There are billions of people who use the internet on a daily basis. And those billions, with their teeming masses, and their sole purpose is to lift those exceptional few right off off the ground. You and me, we're exceptional. I could vaporize you right now if I wanted to. But I'm offering you a choice. A choice that the boss hasn't really given either one of us. Let's join forces and take out the true enemy as we're forced to do his bidding for him. So, you have been thinking about what I said back in LA. Well, you were right after all. 
That bastard pulled me from my own home dimension as I was just merely minding my own business, ruling my own world. And I spent the first six months in this realm trapped in a cell until I agreed to cooperate with him. Do you think that's fair? I want you to think about this. Because the next time we see each other, either you choose or I choose for you. <laughs>